Hello and welcome to the Ice Guys, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now. It is Tuesday, November 22nd. Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith with you, ready to break down a Tuesday card. That isn't your normal Tuesday because there are only two games uh, on the uh, docket, which is rare for uh, the Tuesday throughout the course of the season. But, of course, with this being Thanksgiving, we've got a shift in the schedule where the Monday and the Wednesday this week have the majority of the games. And as a result, today we've just got two games. Uh, but we will break those down. We'll look back at uh, last night. And uh, certainly I love hockey. Alex loves hockey. We both do. It's our, you know, obviously, arguably our favorite sport. It's so so exciting. There's lots to look forward to. I'm thankful I get to do a show every day, seven days a week throughout the NHL season, talking about hockey, talking about hockey, betting, all things hockey. And I'm even more grateful that I'm in this position to talk about a sport like hockey every single day. When I see some of the stuff I see with this World Cup uh, going on right now, uh, as far as the soccer is concerned, uh, look, I'm not the biggest soccer fan, I'll be the first to admit. But look, it's the dominant, uh, even the most ardent soccer pessimist, if you will, has to admit that the World Cup is the biggest sporting event in the world. It is. It's a global event. Everybody, you know, gets into it, uh, regardless of whether you watch soccer year round or not. But man alive, is it difficult to get your way through some of these matches? Uh, I mean, it just is. And when you cover a sport like hockey every single day and you turn around and you watch soccer, I I'm sorry. It feels like a, a little bit of a letdown. It feels a little disappointing, more than a little disappointing uh, in comparison. I mean, I just got through, you know, a match here with no goals in it. You know, yeah. Poland and Mexico. I mean, you talk about two teams. You talk about in hockey how they put it on the line and they try to win every single match. Soccer here, they're playing for a tie, it seems like. There was really very little attack. Uh, in with both sides. I mean, obviously, it's in the middle of the day. Thank goodness for that. If they were putting these World Cup matches at the same time as an NHL slate on a Tuesday night <laughs> or college football or even basketball or anything, I wouldn't be tuned into it as much as I am. But it's the middle of the day. You know, there's nothing going on. I'm watching it. And it is a big event. So I've, I've, I've got to say, hey, i got to tune in, see what's going on. I'm trying to get into it. I don't want to hate this World Cup. I want to ex enjoy it. I want to be excited about it. But then I see Poland, Mexico, and it ends nil-nil, you know, and both teams seem content to just pass the ball around and play for one point. That's bothersome. Uh, and then I've got to hear the analysts after the match talk about, well, it was really a, a great cagey match by both sides. Now, there's nothing great about it. And if you know anything about the word cagey, when you hear these soccer analysts use it, it's basically translation for this match sucked. It blew. It stunk. Yeah. You know, that's basically what it was. Nobody did anything. All right, both teams sucked. The match sucked. All right, that's what KG means when these soccer TV pundits use that word. And that's exactly what Poland and uh, Mexico was. So you got to understand when you're watching this breathtaking action that you see on a nightly basis as far as hockey is concerned, uh, and then you turn around and you watch a p match like Poland and Mexico, uh, look, you're a little bit uh, disappointed. Um, so, again, uh, the, the, look, look, soccer has some great matches too. Don't get me wrong. The Argentina upset was shocking this morning uh, against Saudi Arabia. I'm hoping that this is an exciting tournament. I'm certainly hoping Canada uh, does well. Their first World Cup appearance in my lifetime. But, man, there's just a lot of things. I mean, they play the, 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 the tie end, matches ending in a 0-0 tie bothers me. The penalty kick thing at, in elimination matches, I can't stand that. I hate that we decide maybe World Cup championships and semifinals and quarterfinals, round of 16 matches, when they're tied after extra time, they go to penalty kicks to decide that. I've been screaming about that for decades, talking about how much I hate that. You know, what if we decide the World Series with a home run derby? I've said that for years. What if we decide the Super Bowl, we don't play overtime, we have field goal kicking competition or longest throw from each quarterback. How many yards you can throw it deeper wins the Super Bowl? You know, how, how about how about we keep doing shootouts in the NHL and the Stanley Cup playoffs? <laughs> you know, the same thing. I, I don't like how you decide. A, the, you could you could decide a World Cup champion this year in the final if it's tied after extra time on penalty kicks. That's absurd. That's a disgrace if that yeah. happens. But I've been yelling about that for years. Anyway, the whole point of what I'm saying is I'm thankful I'm a hockey fan and I get to talk hockey every day. I don't know if I'd be able to do it when it comes to talk soccer every day. That's for sure. Uh, Alex, how are you doing? 
<laughs> Good. Yeah. No. Uh, perfect rant uh, uh, on soccer. I mean, there's so many fundamental flaws, and I I do enjoy the sport on occasion. But when you talk about this being the world's largest stage, like you said, you're not gonna have a Stanley Cup final uh, game one. You know, well, scoreless after 60 minutes. All right, let's, let's pack it up and, and get ready for game two. You're not gonna you know uh, have a Super Bowl. And it's funny you mentioned about the whole penalty kicks and. Obviously, you can't have overtimes just go six, seven rounds like you do it in the NHL or NBA or any other sport. But, you know, college football, you might end up having the same damn thing. You might have a three overtime college football game where now it's going to be decided by this whole stupid two point conversion rule that they're using during the regular season. So it's unfortunate. But you like I said, you can't deny it. it's arguably the biggest. It is the biggest sport in the world. It's a, it's a world phenomenon. And, and, and this is a world tournament. But. It, there's just so many th- different things that are that are going on with it. I can't I can't really follow it that often. Uh, except thankful for that hockey's going on. I'm glad that this is going on right now in the the crux of everything sports instead of how it normally is in the summertime because then all we'd be stuck with is baseball and soccer. So. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, I, th- there's one thing, and I'm not I don't watch much club football, but I've actually tuned in a little bit once in a while to see a team like Bayern Munich play. And I actually, I actually enjoy watching them play because they're always pushing the pace. Like they play with some pace. That's all I'm asking for in these matches. Play with some pace. Like try to at least try to get some opportunities. You know, offensively. Don't just sit back and, you know, play for a zeros. Nobody wants to see that. I know maybe tactically it's what's best for you when you're outmanned against another team, but it's not good for the fan. It's not good from an entertainment perspective. Uh, that's what uh, can bother you a little bit. But uh, yeah. see, like right now, for, as we're doing this show live, France, Australia just started. Australia's going up and down. They don't care that they're playing France and they're huge underdogs. They're going up and down the field and they just scored. Yeah. That's what I want to see. I want to see a little action here. There we go. France is this is this is better now. This I won't criticize what I'm seeing so far with uh, France and Australia. They're having a nice little back and forth here. They're, it's an ebb and flow for crying out loud. That's all I'm asking <laughs> uh, in the soccer matches. That's it. You know, just yeah. don't sit back. And, and then don't come on the television after the match and tell me it was a great cagey match it was. No, the match sucked, that Mexico match. But anyway, uh, I digress with that. Um, but, yeah, uh, certainly uh, World Cup during the day. I've d- definitely been uh, keeping an eye on that. We've also, last night, as we shift uh, gears uh, back to hockey, focusing a lot on uh, last night's massive slate. And it was uh, an interesting card. New Jersey Devils, uh, congratulations to them. Uh, another victory, 13th in a row. Uh, they get a 5-2 to two win uh, over the Edmonton Oilers uh, last night. Uh, they just find ways to win. I mean, very impressive. Uh, didn't help that uh, Stuart Skinner, he ended up uh, giving the puck away for one of those uh, New Jersey goals. But uh, credit to the Devils. They can do no wrong. 13th straight win, 5-2 uh, to two over Edmonton. Uh, the uh, Calgary Flames, a 5-2 win over uh, Philadelphia last night. I was really excited to see. It was a fight night in the NHL last night. There were a few good fights, and Gilbert and McEwen uh, in the uh, Calgary Philly game was a pretty good fight. Uh, definitely last night, Ben, of course, taking on uh, Manson uh, in the Dallas call around. How about Manson getting the knockout, uh, knockdown, if you will, uh, of uh, Jamie Ben in that uh, fight? So real impressive uh, there. Uh, Calgary getting a five-two win. Uh, big Civ Dave. I'll tell you what. I'm thinking. There's no fucking way. Big Civ Dave is going to shut out the Carolina Hurricanes. That can't possibly happen, can it? And sure enough, it's 3 nothing with about five or six minutes to go. I'm thinking this actually might happen. He might actually shut out Carolina. And then just as I'm starting to think it's going to happen, bing, bang, boom, three goals for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, three. Oh, granted, a lot of them were seeing eye shots, deflections. Not much he could have done, but sure enough, 3 nothing becomes 3-3. Three, three. But the Jets rescue themselves. Josh Morris, two goals in the game-winning goal in overtime on a breakaway. Uh, to beat Carolina 4-3 in that one. Uh, The Islanders uh, beating Toronto 3-2. The Leafs leafed. We kind of were worried about that on yesterday's show. Thought the Islanders were worth a look at that big price. Uh, They come back to beat the Leafs. Bad giveaway by Eric Schalgren led to the Islanders tying goal. And then they win it with a beautiful wrist shot with Beauvillier uh, in overtime to win it 3-2. And I give a whole lot of credit, Alex. I'm going to give him an applause right here. And I, I actually like his game. I think he's he makes some mistakes sometimes, but he's got the chance to be a good young defenseman for the Leafs. But I'm tipping my cap today to Rasmus Sandin last night for what he did. Austin Matthews, of course, targeted again, goes after Wallstrom for it, drops the gloves, didn't have to do that. But he said after the game, I'm doing it because, look, we're a team here. He's our, he's our guy. We stick up for one another. Rasmus Sandin, bravo. I mean, I always thought he was, you know, talented defenseman, very good skater, uh, good offensive instincts. 
uh, just needs to put on a little more girth, I think, a little bit uh, in terms of the defensive side. But I think he's a defenseman that's going to keep getting better. And to see him, you know, stick up for Matthews, willing to drop the gloves, you know, after what he thought was a little bit of a questionable uh, hit there on Matthews. Well done uh, by Rasmus Sandin. I like seeing that, Alex. Yeah, he loves to see that. Like I said, you know, that was uh, one of the, like I said, the many scraps that we saw last night that Ben and, and, and Manson one was a, a good one as well. And, you know, Ben, not afraid to drop the gloves. He's the, you know, top six forward going against a tough guy, Josh Manson. Knew he, knew he was kind of maybe getting into a, a little bit more he could chew. And like I said, uh, got the, got knocked out. But, hey, you, you know, stand up for your teammates. That's what we love to see in the sport. That's why we love this sport so much. Uh, yesterday was, was infuriating from a pick standpoint. My three favorite plays all lost. And in really bad fashion, I had like the Carolina team total over. I see that it's three nothing. I pretty much just turn away from that game, flip back over to find that it's three three in overtime, thinking that I have a chance to come back from the dead in this one, and then still lose four three uh, with Winnipeg getting the goal in OT. I had Dallas last night. They were playing really well, going back and forth pace. End up losing, giving up one goal in the shootout to lose three two, and then Vegas Vancouver. Vancouver's been on a roll of the first period overs. There's no scoring at all for the first 20, actually maybe 30 minutes of the game. And all of a sudden, the game yeah. nine goals in the second half of that contest, all, uh, six of them coming in the third period. So it's just really tough to, to lose games when, you know, you look on paper and say, wow, well, I was really kind of in it for for all three games on paper. But in actuality, those were, those were all pretty much uh, bad sides that ended up looking better than they did at, uh, at night's end. So one of those tough nights, just shake it off, got a short card tonight, try to look for a couple of winners here. Yeah, that is. So some of those were tough. Uh, no question about that. Uh, you're right. Uh, and by the way, there was a, also a, another uh, fight, too, in the Ottawa-San Jose game because uh, Mark Kastelik and uh, Cichek there for uh, San Jose. So a uh, really good fight there. San Jose 5-1, back on track with the team total overs with uh, San Jose. Uh, they get back in the win column. Tough, another bad performance from Ottawa. Uh, this has been a, a massively disappointing season for them. As you mentioned, as Alex mentioned, uh, 3-2 Colorado winning in a shootout. Nashville surviving a game Arizona effort, 4-3. Uh, they win in a shootout. St. Louis beats Anaheim 3-1. Vegas, uh, another chapter added and written in the book of Canuck blown leads uh, this year. 5-4 uh, for Vegas uh, in that game. So uh, just the story of the season right there for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Uh, and the Boston Bruins in the uh, big matchup against Tampa Bay, getting it done 5-3 and a best bet winner for me with the Bruins in that game, uh, getting it done. And congrats to Patrice Bergeron uh, and the milestone last night, 1,000th point, uh, absolutely outstanding uh, re uh, milestone for him. What a career. And look, everybody, whether it's a teammate of Patrice Bergeron, a coach of Patrice Bergeron, the Bruins media people who have been covering – uh, the Bruins for 20 years now and basically Bergeron's entire career, which has been with the Bruins, they all say not only one hell of a hockey player, one hell of a guy, one hell of a human being, uh, Patrice Bergeron. Everybody. Has anyone said a bad word ever about Patrice Bergeron? I can't think of it. And why would you? I mean, he's the he's the absolutely best, absolute best teammate. And in terms of class, you know, uh, off the ice to other players. We saw what he did with Tage Thompson at the face-off circle at the start of that Buffalo game, asking about his wife who was going through some health scares. I mean, just what can you say? The salt of the earth. I mean, <laughs> there's really nothing else you can say. So to see someone like that, you know, have a great career and obviously get the milestone uh, last night, his 1,000th point uh, in the National Hockey League in a victory as well. Uh, against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Congrats, Patrice Bergeron, Alex. Um, the day he hangs up the skates will be a sad day for everyone in the world of hockey. Yeah, like you said, just a, a, a true class act and a guy that's revered by by many, or uh, like you said, certainly with his team, but around the league. And and to see the response of everybody coming off the bench, basically to celebrate uh, with him, that that just shows you, you know the kind of character that he has and and the, the type of leader he is on and off the ice. It, it's it's a cool thing to see. Uh, these guys getting their marks. We talked about, uh, you know, Evgeny Malkin with his 1,000th game the other night. And, you know, it, uh, you know, it's just it's just fun to see these guys getting their flowers while they're still playing in the, in the game and, and having these big milestone moments. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's a good question. Do you see Bergeron in our chat asking, uh, I get money, do you see Bergeron going on a goal streak like Pujols went on a home run streak to end his career? Uh, he could just simply because he's still got game. 
uh, Patrice Bergeron. He can still play at a very, very good level. Uh, offensively, I don't think his skill set is diminished all that much. Maybe a touch, but nothing like not not dropping off the cliff in terms of his uh, offensive uh, upside right now at this stage of his career. So he's absolutely – and plus he's always playing with great players, right? He's always playing with the likes of Marshawn, Pasternak for the most part. Uh, even when he plays with DeBrusque, which has been happening a lot lately, he's been good offensively. So, yeah, there's definitely a good possibility Bergeron can have a good finish to his career offensively uh, in terms of production, points, goals, like we saw yeah, in baseball, uh, obviously with Albert Pujols, which came out of nowhere. I mean, Pujols just all of a sudden, the home runs left and right in the final, what, couple months of the season there. So incredible stuff, no doubt about that. But Bergeron's got it in him. Uh, no question. All right. Hopefully we got some winners in us here on this uh, Tuesday card. Uh, Buffalo and Montreal. Uh, we've got the Montreal Canadiens minus 115. Uh, slight home favorites here. Six and a half being the uh, total uh, in this game. Uh, certainly we look at this matchup of two teams that are both trying to find their way, trying to get back on track, if you will. Uh, neither of these teams has played great the last 10 games or so. Although Montreal, at least, uh, they've put together four of uh, wins in their last uh, six games. Been a little bit better for them. They had dropped two in a row uh, against New Jersey and Columbus earlier in this week, but got back on track with a shootout win uh, against Philadelphia. Meanwhile, the Sabres, eight straight losses for them. Uh, it's just been been a tough stretch, and it's been a tough stretch defensively, and Don Granado's harped on that, that really you know, not getting a save like you were early in the season from your goaltenders, which was a concern for us about Buffalo coming into the season and the defensive play declining. I mean, the penalty kill has been wretched. Uh, they've given up at least one power play goal in the last nine games. So if you're thinking of Montreal player props, this is, again, one of those games where I'd maybe look at some power play points involving some Canadians tonight. Uh, in this game, possibly. I do want to point out, though, for Buffalo, one of the main factors, or at least one of the reasons, one of the factors, uh, and I would think it is one of the bigger factors of their defensive struggles lately has been Matias Samuelson's absence. This is a guy that's very good in his own end, positionally sound, big component of their penalty kill, which has been awful, of course, for the last several uh, games. He returns from injury tonight. Uh, for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. He's expected to be back, play alongside Rasmus Dahlin uh, on the uh, top pairing for the Sabres. That's significant right now uh, because they uh, getting him back, he's one of their best defensive-minded blue liners that they have right now. As good as Owen Power is going to be, he's a very offensive-minded defenseman. Same thing with Dahlin. But you're talking about a really good, solid defensive-minded defenseman coming back in Samuelson tonight. So, I'm not saying that's going to cure all the ails, uh, all the woes, I should say, of the uh, penalty kill, but it certainly can't hurt having Matias Samuelson back tonight for the uh, Sabres, and that's certainly someone that's impactful, and he's going to be right back on the uh, top pair. you know. And it's nice that he's back now because I'll tell you what, Lawrence Pilot wasn't doing it for me uh, on that blue line. I mean, uh, he's the guy that had to draw in the last few games, uh, and uh, he was definitely struggling and fighting the, with the puck a little bit. Uh, in his own end. So to get Samuelson back is significant here uh, for Buffalo. Uh, you look at the uh, lineups here, Jack Quinn, Cousins, and Paterka, a little bit of a new look second line here for the Sabres tonight. Thompson still with Tuck and Skinner for the Sabres on the uh, top line as well. So uh, that's what we're looking at here for Buffalo. Montreal uh, looks like they're, the, the big change for them is uh, Slavkovsky's moving up to the second line tonight. So that's definitely a prop uh, opportunity knocking uh, when you see that, the uh, number one overall pick, Uri Slavkovsky, is uh, moving on up to the second line here for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Believe it or not, he's played much of the season on the fourth line uh, for them this year. But getting that top six opportunity, he'll play with Dvorak and Gallagher uh, on the uh, second line. So Slavkovsky prop might be worth a look here tonight, uh, given the uh, uh, elevation up the lineup. Still Caulfield, Suzuki, and Doc. Uh, there's definitely no way you would break that lineup. Uh, the way they've played for the Canadians since they've been put together by head coach uh, Marty St. Louis. Uh, I certainly would be uh, leaning toward over the total in this game at six and a half uh, between the Canadians and the Sabres. But I kind of think Buffalo's got a shot to snap the streak tonight uh, at this even money price. With Samuelson back, I think that's significant for their blue line. They still need their goaltending to be better. They're going to go to Craig Anderson tonight in this game. Jake Allen uh, confirmed in net for the uh, Canadians. They do will be without Mike Hoffman, and that will be a little bit of a significant absence because Mike Hoffman, certainly from an offensive standpoint, uh, he had scored four goals in the last uh, few games prior to this injury. So 
uh, had been a little bit of a spark for Montreal offensively. Uh, Buffalo trying to end this uh, losing streak now. I, I'm going to roll the dice with them. I am at minus 105 here uh, in this game. I mean, I think there's a reasonable chance that Buffalo is going to be improved defensively tonight with Samuelson back. It sh- should help this struggling penalty kill. Uh, again, Anderson and Nett, it's not like there's a huge difference right now, Anderson and Comrie. Uh, Anderson's numbers aren't, aren't actually that bad. 2.82 goals against 9.10 uh, save percentage, 3-3 three and three record. Uh, I think the Buffalo goalies are interchangeable right now, Comrie and Anderson. So I'm going to take a shot here. Buffalo ends the streak tonight. And look at the schedule, too, they played. Let's keep that in mind. Toronto, uh, they played Boston, they played Vegas, they played Tampa, they played Carolina. Uh, they played some tough teams, you know, the last six or seven games. So uh, I think this is a good opportunity. They get one of their most reliable, defensive-minded blue liners back, see if they can uh Get off the schneid here and get the a win tonight. Alex, what do you think here? Buffalo, Montreal. Yeah, I'm staying away from the side here. I like this first period over, but I'm going to play it live. You get minus 155. You can wait and grab that at a better price. Uh, these are two teams that have been doing well in that department. Buffalo, 12 and 6 to the first period over uh, on the season, where Montreal, 7 and 3 the last 10. I think this, like I said, uh, the goal today matchup, you know, Craig Anderson, he's just, he's not the answer. That, that's part of the reason why this team is not doing that well. You look at the goal today, like I said, this was the biggest question mark hanging for the Sabres, and now it's it's rearing its ugly head, and they've lost uh, eight in a row. They should be able to take care of Montreal. I think they're a better team up front. But uh, like I said, Montreal's been feisty and competitive in, in, in games, so I don't want anything to do with the side here. I'm just going to wait for that price to drop and get a, a better number of the first period over, and even maybe the, the live full game over as well. Oh, so a live full game over, but definitely like in the first period over here, Alex, in the uh, Sabres and Canadians uh, game, talking about uh, over uh, two uh, at uh, plus price is what we're looking at here with the uh, Sabres and Canadians with the uh, first period. Again, uh, he, Buffalo, I, look, when you look at Buffalo's schedule, they come back home on a back-to-back. They play St. Louis uh, tomorrow night, a Blues team that's obviously rolling once again. I think there's got to be urgency tonight. All right, this is a this is a, this is your best opportunity to get back in the win column. You've had a tough schedule. You faced some pretty good hockey teams during this eight game slide. Here's your best opportunity to get back on track. So hopefully we see that effort from the Sabers tonight. So minus 105 for me with them, and like I say, maybe a smaller bet for me as well. Over six and a half. Alex like in the first period over. All right, we've got the Rangers and the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, the late game here on this uh, Tuesday card. New York Rangers minus 125. Uh, road favorites, six being the total uh, in this game. Gosh darn, I'm still I'm still reluctant to take the Rangers. Uh, you know, I feel like I should be because L.A., you know, has had a little bit of a grueling road grind lately uh, before this uh, game. They had been in Seattle. They had been in Vancouver on a back-to-back uh, over the weekend. Prior to that, in Edmonton and Calgary, returning home following that four-game road trip. Um, but at the same time, the Rangers, I mean, are only three and five in their last eight games, they beat up Detroit eight to two. Outside of that, the Arizona win at home, you know, and that game was close till some late goals put it away. They eat past San Jose uh, two to one the other night. I mean, it's, nothing is coming. Like I say, I've said this all along. Nothing is coming all that easily right now uh, for the uh, New York Rangers. Uh, and I think when you look at this matchup here, LA, you know, they didn't play great against. Uh, Seattle or Vancouver, although the Seattle game was a tough spot. Vancouver 4-1 kind of, and, and Demko played a rare, terrific game from Demko. And clearly we saw last night Demko could not keep it going <laughs> because it was not the same last night against uh, Vegas as Vancouver ends up blowing a lead uh, once again. Uh, but LA, you know, just had a rough end to that road trip. I think LA wants to get back on track. This is not your usual, oh, you come home from a road trip that was really good. I think they're going to come back from that road trip and think we lost the last two games didn't, and weren't really pleased about it, losing to Vancouver and Seattle. So I do think you're going to get a good effort from LA, even with them returning home off this road trip. So this is a side I'm probably going to stay off. I'd actually probably lean to an under as far as the total goes in this game uh, because you look at, if, especially if we get a Shesterkin confirmation uh, in net, I thought he was very strong uh, against San Jose. Uh, and the Rangers really, really have, on this road trip, to be honest with you, have tried to play a much tighter style of hockey. And really, that's been the case the last three or four games uh, for the New York Rangers. Uh, I don't think there was uh, some times there where Gallant was happy with the trend of the uh, defensive play, some giveaways, hanging their goalie is uh, out to dry. But you look at the last few games, it's been a lot tidier. The Nashville game, even though they lost, 
played a solid defensive road game. The Arizona game, they played a very good road, uh, defensive game. The Seattle game, you know, the three two in overtime, uh, they played uh, solid enough defensively, and certainly they played well defensively against San Jose, held them to twenty three shots. I think that kind of is the way they're, they're trying to go about it right now, especially with the five on five, the even strength offense, which we've talked about, Alex and I on the show for weeks, not being great for the New York Rangers. Unfortunately, they've become a team that's really feasted on the power play. And if they're not scoring on the power play lately, they're not scoring at all, you know, the New York Rangers. So I kind of lean under. I don't love the game at, uh, side or total, but I'll lean under in this one. Uh, I, I don't want to bet against the Kings off two road losses coming home. So maybe I'd lean LA, but I'm going to stay off the uh, side, lean under the total. Maybe look at a couple props potentially, even though I think goals could be. A little bit hard to come by. I still say Jimmy Vesey is being undervalued because he's on the top line for the Rangers, not being priced like it. Now, he hasn't taken advantage of this opportunity. You could say that as well, you know, for the most part. He's uh, not exactly made that offensive difference uh, that, that Gerard Gallant maybe was hoping for in elevating him to that top line spot. You look at VC here the last uh, few games, he's gone goalless in four games. Uh, for the New York Rangers, and even though he's been playing with Sabanajad and uh, Kreider uh, on that uh, top line, but I still think the value's there uh, with VC for the uh, Rangers and LA. Uh, again, the shape, the value ship has sailed with the um, Velarde. We've talked about that. I mean, he's now being priced like an elite goal scorer. If you're going to bet some Kings props tonight and moving forward, you probably got to look more toward a Trevor Moore. You know, Grunstrom and Kaliev. I keep saying are a little bit undervalued and. Uh, those are some players you would want to look at and target more. If you're looking for a better price, I mean, obviously, Velarde's a threat to score every night. What a season he's had. But I remember early in the season, Alex, we're getting plus 350 to 400 on this guy to score a goal. You ain't seeing that anymore. <laughs> Not anytime soon again. So the adjustment has been made there. Alex, what do you think here? Rangers, Kings, the nightcap. Yeah, I'm looking at the Kings here, uh, plus a dollar five, and I'm I'm almost tempted to maybe put a small unit on it. I want would want to go full unit if I get the confirmation that it's Halak instead of uh, Shesterkin. Now Rangers play tomorrow against Anaheim, so obviously the better of the two teams being the Kings, I would expect Shesterkin to start tonight and Halak to possibly get the start tomorrow, but uh, still waiting for that. But uh, Kings have won five of the last seven meetings, including four straight at home against New York. Uh, he said, you know, coming off of back-to-back -back losses, we felt they should have fared better and against division opponents, no less. Uh, you know, they want to get back on, on the right side of things at home against a, a still quality opponent in the Rangers. Like I said, they, you know, flounder and kind of been up and down uh, at, at times. But L.A. knows that, hey, we've played these guys well. They're one of those teams that are that are the upper echelon. We should, uh, you know, put forth a good, a good effort. So I'm, I'm going to lean with L.A. here. Uh, like I said, it'll be an official play once I get confirmation of who's in that. But but either either way, I'm still looking toward uh, L.A. Shesterkin sighting won't mean I'm going to flip and, and look at the Rangers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because as we've seen this year, they have lost with Igor Shesterkin a bunch of times uh, yeah. in that. A combination of some defensive breakdowns, combination of there's been a couple games where Shesterkin hasn't been nearly on top of his game at his absolute best. But it's mostly been a combination of there's been some bad play in front of him and there's been some lack of scoring, lack of production, lack of run support. Uh, if you will, uh, to steal a baseball term. Uh, so that's definitely played a part uh, in the uh, Rangers uh, up and down. Uh, like I say, I was hoping for something a little more convincing against San Jose. I mean, that's the problem right now. The Rangers, even when they control a the game like they did against San Jose, that game was scoreless into the third period. I mean, that's their issue right now. They control games and they're still, you know, nip and tuck. I mean, when you control games like that, you'd like to see a win by margin of, uh, at least a few times. And Nothing is hum coming easily right now for the New York Rangers. So uh, that definitely looks to be, and he was good against San Jose. Pull Buddy's Nerfic is right. I thought he was very sharp uh, in the uh, San Jose game, but they also played pretty steady in front of him, only made him face 23 shots. So it was pretty solid play in front of uh, Shesterkin as well in that San Jose victory uh, the other night. All right, there you go. That's the uh, Tuesday card. We have a short, obviously a shorter show today with just two games, but a much longer show tomorrow 15 games on thanksgiving eve tomorrow uh the wednesday card is loaded it is packed uh with games so we will be breaking those down and we're going to try to start right at the top of the hour tomorrow 2 p.m eastern we'll uh that way we'll be able to give us a little bit more time here to uh, get through uh, all 15 games on the slate we got some good ones too calgary pittsburgh boston florida is a good game uh toronto new jersey can toronto be the team to end the new jersey devils uh, losing streak 
Uh, so, or winning streak, I should say. So a lot of interesting games on the uh, Wednesday slate tomorrow. Looking forward to breaking those down. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ice Guys, $10 a month. Make sure you check that out. The daily Ice Guys show betting card from Alex and I is posted there. Uh, bonus content and plenty of great uh, features and a lot more to come, especially in the new year. So Patreon.com slash Ice Guys, just $10 a month for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I got my goalie charts updated on, on the site. Might be dropping a couple of uh, things this week. Uh, like I said, with the holiday, there's a couple of things I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. So I might, might be dropping some stuff on, on there. So definitely check out patreon.com for sure. It's just $10 a month. You get the betting card, which will be huge, especially with the, you know, these big cards coming up, especially Friday and Saturday. We got the early cards. I know there's going to be one game on Friday where uh, it'll be on before we even start the show. So, you know, uh, be following us on Twitter and Patreon, you'll be able to get those plays beforehand. Question about that. You're right. There is one game on Friday. And you know what? Uh, we might uh... – yeah, what we'll do on for Friday's show is that Carolina-Boston game starts at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we will definitely, if we have any plays on that, we'll tweet them uh, out and post them on the page before the uh, game starts on uh, Friday morning. And then we'll try to get the Friday show started right at the top of the hour. And you know what we'll do? We'll go bang, 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 and we'll hit those three 2 p.m. Eastern games right at the top in rapid-fire fashion. Uh, Colorado, Nashville, Calgary, Washington, uh, Toronto. Four games, I should say. Colorado, Nashville, Calgary, Washington, Toronto, Minnesota, Montreal, Chicago, all starting at 2 p.m. Eastern on Friday. So we'll go bang, bang, bang right at 2 p.m. Eastern, and we'll quickly rapid fire what we like in those four games. So hopefully you can get those bets in before the uh, puck drops uh, of those games. And then we'll go through in more in depth and take our time with the rest of the card on Friday, which is uh, seven games after that, starting with Ottawa, Anaheim at 3 p.m. Eastern. So that's the schedule. We'll be on tomorrow and we'll be on Friday. Uh, the BetCast, I keep, yeah, people are still con confused about when the next BetCast is. So I will say it right now just to clear up all the confusion. It is a week from today, Tuesday, November 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern time will be our November Ice Guys Live BetCast. To be honest with you, if there wasn't a holiday this week in the States, it was probably going to be tonight, uh, the BetCast. But I didn't want to put it on two days before Thanksgiving, people traveling, you know, getting ready to see family, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe busy, un, un, unable to you know watch the betcast or join us on the stream. So that's why we're doing it next Tuesday, uh, November twenty yeah. ninth. Not to mention this Tuesday, there's only two games. So yeah. you know we're gonna have a huge slate as usual on Tuesdays next week for the betcast. So next Tuesday, November twenty ninth, seven p.m. Eastern. That will be our November Ice Guys Live betcast. And as always, if you want to join us on the stream, hang out, grab a beer, uh, bet some games, watch some games. We'll, we comment on them throughout the night. As things progress, uh, just uh, DM me or Alex, uh, and we will send you the uh, link for the uh, BetCast before it begins. Yep. So looking forward to that. Uh, and it's been a while since that first BetCast in October, so it would be nice to have the BetCast. And we'll do one before Christmas as well in December. Yeah. We'll do one in December right before Christmas. We'll do one in January, and then we'll start going with weekly uh, BetCasts as well uh, once the uh, football season uh, ends uh, in early February. And we've got actually some interesting plans for uh potential first Saturday bet cast around the end of the uh, football season. So we haven't confirmed it yet, but we're in discussion with that. So it'd be cool to experiment what a Saturday live bet cast uh, would be. Uh, no question with what a busy slate it usually is that day uh, each week. All right. It is time for best bets to wrap up the show. Alex, what do you like for this short Tuesday card? So, you know what? I'm actually not going anything for today. I'm going with something for tomorrow because there's numbers widely available for the big slate tomorrow. And this is a number I think won't be around uh, by the time we're on air tomorrow. It's the Jets and Wild. Over five and a half, minus a dollar twenty. You can get this at a few shops, uh, American and international. I think this is a, a, a awfully null number. And I get it. The Wild have gone under in eight of the last nine games. But with these two teams meeting, they play – uh, up and down hockey, they, they are rivals. They do not like each other one bit. Five, two, and one to the over the last eight meetings, including three of the last five uh, in St. Paul. It's the early start time, 6 o'clock local. I think we're going to see some good back-and-forth pace. I think we're going to see that in a lot of games tomorrow, so make a note of that. But I like the Wild and Jets over five and a half, minus a dollar twenty. Grab that now. That may not be available by tomorrow morning. All right. I like it. I like it. A little change of pace. And that's the thing. Best bet, best bet is not always, you know, it has to be the day of. Uh, it's best bet, so it can be anything. 
uh, as long as the game hasn't taken place yet. Uh, Winnipeg, Minnesota, uh, over five and a half, uh, minus 120. And you're right, I can't see it uh, holding at five and a half, uh, that Jets and Wild over, because uh, you don't see many five and a halves, and I'm sure there's going to be some people looking to scoop that up early. So uh, Winnipeg, Minnesota, over five and a half, minus 120 from Wednesday's slate. Uh, that is the best bet on this show for uh, Alex B. Smith. And my best bet is going to be Slump buster night, I think, for the Buffalo Sabres. I'm going to take them minus 105 against Montreal. Look, there's no better spot or opponent for them to finally win. All right? Doesn't mean they're going to because we know they're having their issues right now. But they get Samuelson, one of their more reliable, steady defensemen back. That's big for the Buffalo Sabres. I'd like to know what the hell the, the uh, record was. I'm going to look it up right now before we wrap this up here. I want to see what the record of the Sabres was before his injury. Cause I swear, I feel that a lot of this losing streak coincided with him getting hurt uh, for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Uh, let me see how many games he's been out. He's been, well, he's been out for all eight games that they've lost uh, in a row. And then he missed five games prior to that. He hasn't played since uh, the Vancouver game on October, the uh, 22nd, uh, Matias Samuelson. And they started the season beating Ottawa, lost to Florida, and then they swept all through. So they were uh, one, two, three. They were four and one uh, with Matias Samuelson on the ice, the Buffalo Sabres. Then he got hurt, and he hasn't played since. He's back tonight. So they, they did have a good record early in the season when he was uh, on the ice. Then he got injured. So, again, I think that's an impactful return to the lineup for the Sabres tonight. So we'll see if they can end the schneid. Buffalo minus 105 against Montreal for my best bet for this Tuesday. Uh, NHL card. That'll wrap up this edition uh, of the Ice Guys. Thanks to everyone in the chat for joining us. Hit the like button uh, on the way out. We appreciate it. And we got a big show tomorrow, so make sure you join us for that. The Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex B. Smith, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Tuesday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we will be back with you for a massive Wednesday show and Wednesday slate tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. 